Hi everyone and welcome back to the Shannon Lee Show. At the time that I'm recording this, I have read 36 books so far this year and I am currently reading two books. And I thought that this would be a good time to share some of my own tips, tricks, pieces of advice if reading more is something you've been wanting to do. Now please keep in mind that you do not have to read more to be considered a reader. You do not have to read a lot to be considered a reader. You can read one book a year and you would still be considered a reader. It does not matter how much you're reading. The quantity of your reading does not not matter, it's the quality of your reading. So here are my 14 tips and tricks that I utilize for reading more and that may hopefully help you read more if that is something you want to do. Tip number one is to read multiple books at once. This is something I highly recommend easing into if you're used to reading only one book at a time and I would recommend reading two books at once to start off and I would even go so far as to recommend starting a second book when you're kind of nearing the end of the first book so that you can be reading multiple books at once, reading two books at once in this scenario, and then you're finishing up the first book as you're starting the second one. That might also help easing into reading multiple books at once so you can kind of get used to what that feels like and setting up a specific schedule of when to read the multiple books, of when to read each book individually. Tip number two is to utilize all formats, ebooks, audiobooks, physical, paperback, hardback, utilize every format. And if you're one who says that audiobooks are not considered reading, Reading. That's okay to have as an opinion for yourself, but that's not a good thing to be saying to other people because it can be considered, especially if your reasoning is that blind people use braille. It takes a lot of money and time and effort for books to get published in braille and that is not a resource that authors usually have and that is not often a resource that publishers have and even if they do, that's not something that they're going to be considering doing. So keep that opinion to yourself or at least only apply it to yourself if you don't consider audiobooks reading. That's not something you should be telling other people. But with that out of the way, utilize all formats, audiobooks, ebooks, physical books, paperbacks, hardbacks, as I said, because that way, because then that way you're not limiting yourself to what you have just on your physical bookshelves or on your ebook shelves or on your audio bookshelves. You're expanding your horizons and you can utilize all those formats. And that can also lend into reading multiple books at once, which I will get into in another tip. The third tip is to dip into multiple genres while you're reading multiple books at once. For for example, if you're reading a historical fiction, then the second book you can pick up could be sci-fi. And if you decide to pick up a third book, it could be fantasy. Utilize multiple genres. And I would even use this as a recommendation to try out genres you don't usually get into, but do not force it. Do not force yourself to read genres that you don't normally read because you're trying to read more and you're not trying to get into a reading slump. So the fourth tip is something I alluded to earlier in the second tip, and that's to read two or more genres at once. And if you're reading a physical book, let's say the historical fiction that you're reading is the physical book, maybe the sci-fi book you're reading can be an audiobook or the fantasy book you're reading can be an ebook. Utilize multiple formats because then you can read them at different points in the day and you can utilize them depending on what exactly you're doing in that specific moment. The fifth tip is to read daily. I understand that this one can be a little bit harder because work schedules, life schedules vary from person to person and from day to day. Even if you're setting aside five minutes to read, then that is all you need. Tips six and seven can really help out with tip five, which was reading daily. And it can also help out with tips three and four, which is to read different genres and to utilize different formats. Tip six is to have set times to read. My personal set time that I absolutely read is before I go to bed, I have about 10 to 30 minutes, roughly depending on what it is and how tired I am, when I actually read and I read my physical book during that time. Have a set time when you're going to sit down or do something to read. And then tip number seven is to have specific times to read certain certain formats. Like I said, you want to be utilizing multiple formats, ebooks, audiobooks, and physical books. And like I said, I read my physical book for about 10 to 30 minutes before bed. I also try to listen to an audiobook while I'm doing stuff. Like I was 
folding some laundry earlier and I was listening to an audiobook while I was doing that. And you can also be reading an ebook as you eat breakfast or eat lunch or eat dinner. You can listen to an audiobook as you go on a walk or do an exercise or as you're cooking. So there are so many scenarios where you can utilize multiple formats and you want to have set and specific times to read each individual format depending on how many books you're reading at once. But like I said in tip one, you want to be careful with how many books you're reading at once if you're new to reading multiple books at once. Tip number eight is to have a book with you at all times. This can help if you have the Kindle app on your phone or have a Kindle or an e-reader of some sort. In a later tip, I also mentioned using Libby and Hoopla and I'll explain that in more detail once I get to that tip. But if you have the Libby and Hoopla apps, that can also help with having ebooks and audiobooks. That is a surefire way to uh, have a book with you at all times because most of us have our phones. And if you have the Libby and Hoopla apps on your phone, surefire way to have a book with you at all times. Tip number nine is to utilize your local library. And this also lends into the Hoopla and Libby apps, which I will talk about in the next tip. But utilize your local libraries if you are able to try to utilize your local library because the more they see that the library is being utilized, the more funding will go to it. But if you utilize your local library, at least the physical one, then you will have access to more physical books that you won't necessarily have to go to a bookstore like Barnes and Noble to buy or you won't have to turn to Amazon for the physical book. Tip 10 is to utilize the apps Hoopla and Libby. I'm not sure if Hoopla is the Los Angeles Public Library specific. I'm pretty sure it's not because I have seen people outside of Los Angeles use it but at the same time I'm not entirely sure. But utilize Hoopla, Libby, apps like it, library apps like it, because then you also have access to ebooks and audiobooks. Hoopla works a lot like Libby and vice versa, although Libby usually has a waiting period for most of its books, whereas Hoopla, you get the books pretty much immediately and you get to borrow the book for 21 days for both apps. So tips 11, 12, and 13 kind of tie together in various ways, but they are separate and can be utilized separately, which is why I ended up putting them separately. So tip number 11 is to read at your own pace. And I feel like a lot of people when they try to read multiple books at once, they think that that automatically means that they have to read really fast at a faster pace. And then that usually ends up getting them into a reading slump. Read at your own pace, whether you read slowly or fast or at a medium pace, no matter how fast or slow you read, you want to read at your own pace, especially when you're reading two or more books at once, because you want to be able to take your time with it and when you're reading multiple books at the same time even if the books are different genres completely different storylines if you read it too fast you can end up overlapping storylines and characters and timelines so just read at your own pace so you don't get confused tip number 12 i'm not going to explain too much don't rush the reading like if you read at a fast pace go for it do it read at whatever pace you want like i said in tip 11. on the flip side however tip number 13 is don't intend intentionally read slower if you want to read at a slightly quicker pace. Don't intentionally try to read slower just because you're reading multiple books at once. Sometimes reading slower, intentionally reading slower can also lead you you into another reading slump because you're like oh I need to take this slowly so I'll only read like a page or whatever. Don't intentionally read slower unless you have to read slower for whatever reason. Tip number 14 is to utilize a reading journal and or reading journal templates. There are a lot of free ones that I'm not going to bother linking just because that would be too many links but I'll link a couple of reading journals that I've used and I have liked but utilizing a reading journal or utilizing some sort of reading journal template or even taking inspiration from some can really help you like delve into what you thought about the book what you liked or didn't like about the book and maybe even some characteristics you liked of the writing style of the author that you liked or didn't like but writing down the basic thoughts can really help you gather what you feel about that book once you're done reading it especially when you're reading multiple books at once i know i said 14 at the beginning of this video but i wanted to throw in a 15th one because it fits try to utilize bookish subscriptions it doesn't have to be a bookish subscription box because those can get pricey but utilize subscriptions like audible kindle unlimited even scribd because that can get you access to even more books at a minimal fee that can really help you expand what you have access to in ebooks and audiobooks so that can really help when maybe hoopla and libby don't have access to those books or won't have access to those books right away 
Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any tips, let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you all in my next video.